Hello, it's me, Dr. Railman, and this is my skull friend, and this is going to be the first of many videos to introduce you to skeletal anatomy, and we're going to start off with the skull. Now, the, the way I'll arrange a lot of these videos is that first I'll introduce you to the bones, then some more complicated things like structures on the bones or openings, you know, and then for the last part, I'll talk about medical applications or functional aspects of the anatomy that I've introduced you to. So at the beginning of videos, you can kind of just get the strict anatomy and then in the later part of these videos I'm creating, then it's a bit more functional. It's not exactly that way on every single video. Uh, sometimes if there's, I, I talk about function along the way, if it, it kind of makes sense to do it that way. But um, for the skull, we're going we're gonna to do it that way. And what I want to do is first introduce you to some of the bones. And I'll introduce you to some really easy ones to start off with. If you've taken a course where you've learned about the human brain, the cerebrum, these, these are associated with the lobes of the cerebrum. Um, and they're located in the same area. So uh, these first ones might be easy for you if you've taken, say, a neurobiology course, even a psychology course, uh, you learn these. Okay, so these uh, first bones are all going to be cranial bones. All right, so here we go. This one is called the frontal bone. It makes sense. And it is... Uh, making up part of the orbit. The orbit is this opening here that your eye is in. And so some of the orbit uh, comes from frontal, but then all of this big vault of the skull is also frontal. Now, one thing I'll do when I talk about these bones is I'll show you where these sutures are. That's important for the skull bones. And so it kind of tells you, well, where exactly does the bone end? And the frontal bone is such a big, obvious bone. And these sutures tell you the extent of this bone. All right. Then the next one is a paired bone in that there's a right and left one. And it's called parietal. And you can see it over here on the left side of the skull. You can see it here on the right side of the skull. Parietal. And there's these edges of, of the parietal. I'll be explaining these sutures in a separate video. We're just doing the bones right now. Okay, a third bone, occipital. And the occipital bone here rises up to meet with the parietal. And the occipital bone also includes some of the underside of the skull. And you'll notice this very large opening. And not surprisingly, the spinal cord goes through that. It's called the foramen magnum. Anyway, um, that hole goes through the occipital. So there's occipital in front of that opening and that, uh, behind that opening. You can think of it as being anterior and posterior to that opening and lateral to it. It's all around it. And then this um, other fairly big bone that goes along with the lobes of your brain, this one, temporal bone. So um, it's here on the side of the skull, and it has sutures all along here. And we will see that the temporal bone that comes out here um, has quite a bit to it. It, it. it makes a bit of a cheekbone, it's got openings and processes to it, and so it's um, it's got a lot going on uh, as far as these skull bones go. Okay, 
those are some of the big ones. I want to finish up with what are called cranial bones, and these are each um, a little bit smaller. I'm going to take the mandible off of the skull. And first I, I want to introduce you to the orbit here. And sorry, shaking things around. I'm trying to get this light in a better spot. Okay. So, um, taking a look here in the orbit, um, I don't want, so the, 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 the bone I'm going to introduce you to here is ethmoid, but in looking at this, I don't want you to confuse it with this bone. And so even though it's not a cranial bone, I think it's important for you to know this bone. Notice that there's an opening in it. This is called the lacrimal, and it has a lacrimal duct that runs in it. It drains the tears from your eyes. And so there's lacrimal, and then behind it is ethmoid. Now, when you come to lab and take a look at these bones, there's a lot of skulls that we have where the ethmoid is broken. Um, this is a nice skull and it's not broken, but um, again, here it is, this bone here. It's at the top of your nasal cavity. We will also see the ethmoid on the interior of the skull. Okay, and then the last of these cranial bones is called sphenoid, and it's here. You see the frontal coming down to it? Do you see the suture here? You can see the sphenoid meets a bit with the frontal and the parietal and the temporal. And so it runs all along in here. And then it also runs on the underside of the skull. And some of these structures are made of sphenoid. Um, not this one. I'll tell you about that one in a second. But it kind of comes up here again. You can see it on the right side of the skull. And then here, and here, and here. So it's got some interesting structures to it. All right. So now I want to move on to some of the facial bones and turn and look at the face now. And I'll start off with a real obvious one. This is the nasal bone. And there's a right and a left. And this one, you know, might get broken if you have a broken nose. It's right here. You might think of it as the bridge of your nose. There's the nasal right there. Okay. Um, taking a look inside the nasal cavity, you'll notice that there are these nice little frilly bones. They are quite fragile and that's another nice thing about this skull is that the conchi, they're called, that the the conchi are um, really nice. Uh, they're, they're quite um, intact and you you don't always see that with with all of these um, skulls that you'll, you'll see in lab, but um, this is nice. And we'll learn about the conchi when we talk about the respiratory system, um, but especially the, these kind of, you see that there's this lower one and the one that's even lower than that. Um, those are uh, from a bone that's called conchi. All right, then nearby, here's a, a major bone of the face, the maxilla. And the, the maxilla rises up here, kind of comes along near the nasal. And it starts to even make a little bit of your cheekbone. We'll talk about that in a second. And it comes down here. And you'll notice that the teeth insert into the maxilla. And that's true for, for all of these teeth. And then you can even see maxilla on the underside of the skull. And you would call this the roof of your mouth. Most of the roof of your mouth is maxilla. 
And so you can see it here. So even these very back teeth are going into the maxilla and not this bone, which I'll introduce next. There's maxilla all there. And so it is a major part of a bony structure called the hard palate that makes part of the roof of your mouth. There's also a soft part, it's called the soft palate. All right, now we see the palatine um, right behind there. And so that's also making up this posterior part of the hard palate, but the teeth don't go into it. The teeth go into the maxilla instead. All right, um, another bone that you can see just underneath here is the vomer. And the vomer makes this bit of a wall that you can see that is in the nasal cavity. Um, it, along with some ethmoid, makes what we call the, the nasal septum. Um, this, that's kind of dividing your nasal cavity right and left, and the vomer does a lot of that. And you notice the vomer kind of sits on top of the sphenoid that I had introduced you to before. All right, then let's bring you back to where the maxilla is, and you'll notice this suture right here. It'd be better on this side, yeah. Um, so you can see this suture here where this is maxilla, and then there's a suture, and then there's this bone. This bone is called zygomatic, and there's a suture here where there's this bone, and this is actually part of the temporal. Now, this whole structure is called the zygomatic arch, and it's made of this bone called zygomatic. That's the anterior part of the zygomatic arch. You can think of it as the cheekbone, but really, we're here in anatomy. It's zygomatic arch. And then this posterior part of the zygomatic arch comes off of the temporal bone, and it's called the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. All right, so it's got a little bit of a name. Um, you might wonder what zygomatic means. Um, the, it's in reference to this kind of shape that it has, um, that it kind of arches like that. And zyga means yoke. And you might think, what, yoke of an egg? What the heck? No, it's a yoke that you would use to, like, attach a ox to a cart. I'll show you a picture of what I mean in the video there. And that, you know, kind of hooking your ox up. I think when things were names, people were, you know, when they were giving names to bones, maybe people were still hooking oxes up to carts a lot. Okay. Um... Now what I want to do is move to the mandible, ta-da, and the mandible is really a bone called the dentary, but in anatomy it, it tends to just be called mandible. So it is a single bone, it's not the fusion of bones, it's just one bone and it has some different parts to it. So we haven't really gotten to parts of the skull yet, but I will tell you these parts of the mandible. So um, here are these two main really obvious parts, right? Um, there's this part that is rounded, and you can imagine that being part of the jaw joint, that it would be joining with the skull. It's nice and rounded. And whenever we see a rounded part of bone, you'll see this one word called condyle associated with this. And this indeed is called the condylar process of the mandible. And when you um, experience anatomy a bit more, that name will feel right to you. 
um, because we're going to see other condyles and you'll be like, oh yeah, it's rounded. It, it's at a joint condyle. Um, <clears throat> then this other part of the mandible, this is called the coronoid process. So these words are a little bit close together in their spelling. Sorry about that. That's the way it is. I didn't name these things. Um, so coronoid process. This actually gets its name from its kind of triangular shape. And um, a muscle attaches there, uh, the temporalis muscle, that helps close the jaw. There's other muscles too. So condylar process, coronoid process of the mandible. Oops, and I forgot uh, one last thing about the mandible. This. This is called the angle of the mandible. And so um, that's going to be relevant when we make some comparisons uh, about mandibles and other uh, skull features when we think about the sex of a skull. And so there's the angle. This happens to be a female. Um, this, this mandible came from female skull.